And so I always knew from the very first, when I was a little boy, that the opportunities that were important that were going to come to me were few, and that the trick was to prepare myself for seizing the few that came. For close to five decades, Charlie Munger and his best friend Warren Buffett made Berkshire Hathaway a well-oiled winning machine based on one simple principle, take advantage of market downturns. You see, when it comes to investing, emotions like greed, fear, and panic can only cause two things, a victorious win or a crushing defeat. And more often than not, the losing side is the one with the emotions. Enter Charlie Munger. For decades, he beat the market by identifying panic sales and seized major opportunities born from falling stock prices. But while he may not be with us anymore, he left an ultimate prediction for 2024. Crisis will bring opportunity. But what exactly is at play here? In this video, we're going to be highlighting the main indicators preceding this golden opportunity, what that means for you, and everything in between. Plus, we will explore strategies for you to prepare and capitalize on this opportunity to build wealth and one-up everyone else. However, before we go into what 2024 has in store for us, can we all breathe a collective sigh of relief for making it past 2023? Because boy, was it a crazy ride. Apart from the fact that an increase in interest rates made life more difficult for millions of Americans, the global economy tanked, inflation was soaring, labor markets tightened, and endless geopolitics rocked the market, causing lots of uncertainty. But like that crazy trio wasn't already enough, 2023 came with another bang. Like a house made of cards, Silicon Valley Bank came crashing down. So you see, many investors across the globe were tremendously happy when 2024 came knocking with its promise of a better economic outlook. Fast forward to the first quarter though, and it's already looking like 2024 is not the knight in shining armor that everyone was expecting. Scratch that, it's already looking like it'll be worse than in 2023. This year, the economy will have to deal with three major challenges. Rising national debt, unanticipated increase in interest rates, and high inflation. Now, these three key issues will impact a variety of domains and industries, such as the real estate and the amount of loans that businesses take out. But guys, make no mistake, the aforementioned issues will bite the backs of everyone to a certain degree. No matter how wealthy or poor you are, no one would be exempt from the challenge at hand. To start with, the government will have to pay more interest on its debt, which naturally implies that taxpayers may have to put in more money. Uh, are you a taxpayer? Of course you are! So you will have to up your ante soon enough. And how about the job market? At the start of the year, industry experts and analysts predicted that millions of Americans would lose their jobs this year. But sadly, it's already happening faster than expected. American employers slashed over 84,000 jobs in February, marking the highest figure for any February since 2009. And again, it cut across every industry. But if you thought those indicators weren't enough to make you concerned, you might want to check this out. At the moment, there is a significant decrease in the M2 money supply, which measures the amount of U.S. money in circulation. Over the last two years, it has declined by nearly 5%, representing the most significant drop in the lifetime of most individuals reading this. This decline has also been the largest since the Great Depression, as illustrated in this chart. And guess what? The last time this happened, the U.S. had one of the greatest economic recessions of all time. Now, all of this seems pretty awful news, right? Well, get ready for the shock of your life. Because in spite of all the doom and gloom, Charlie Munger predicted that this could be one of the best things to happen to investors, and that all we need to do to take advantage of this opportunity is to understand MOCV. Never heard of it prior to now? Well, it stands for Madness Overselling Cheap Value. And it basically implies that overselling things due to negative emotions like fear or panic drastically reduces their value which in turn provides astute investors the chance to take advantage of that discount to make enormous profits, especially in the long term. Allow us to paint out the psychology of investing in challenging economic climates. So, you know when the markets are dipping and stocks are dropping all willy-nilly? Now, how would you feel in that situation? Panic? Fear? A mixture of both? Here's the thing. Anxiety breeds insecurity, which breeds opportunity, which breeds profit. But here's how it's going to play out. Imagine two investors named Josh and Ava. 
They both have the same portfolios. But given the harsh climate, the values keep dropping with no signs of things getting better. Now, while Josh sells his stocks at cheap prices, Ava instead takes advantage of the situation by buying more stocks while things are so low. In that situation, wouldn't Ava come out on top when the market eventually bounces back? Make no mistake, horrible things in the economy have often occurred throughout American history. It is true, and it's gonna keep happening. However, both Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett believed that the U.S. economy is robust, meaning that it will always get better, no matter how bad it seems. So you see, only those who understand MOCV will profit from the resiliency of the economy. Because unlike those who begin to fear and go on an overselling madness, they'll comprehend the psychology of what's going on and remain calm. While he was still alive, Charlie Munger was once asked what it takes to be a good investor, and he singled out three things. Temperament, deferred gratification, and the willingness to wait. Before adding that, good investing requires a weird combination of patience and aggression, and not many people have it. Now, before you already assume that you're one of those few people who qualify as a good investor in Charlie Munger's books, you might want to remember what happened back in 2020. Now, you probably agree with us that, at the time, panic, fear, anxiety, that was simply the order of the day. There was a whole lot of craziness going on when the market was going down at record speeds, making people fall under the spell of manic overselling. Now, here's the million-dollar question. At that time, what did you do? Were you calm, or did you sadly sell despite seeing mediocre prices? Now, some of you might remember the craziness of the 2008-2012 real estate cycle. This is when the market was hit pretty badly and the prices were at all-time lows. As a matter of fact, between the fourth quarter of 2007 and the fourth quarter of 2008, the median existing home price in the United States dropped by an unprecedented 12.4%. And this marked the largest quarterly decline since NAR started tracking prices in 1979. But get this, in terms of the whole year 2008, the median existing home price dropped significantly by 9.5%, from $217,900 in 2007 to $197,100. In short, the real estate crisis was so bad that its effects reverberated across other continents. Now we want you to picture the panic and pandemonium that engulfed the air during the tumultuous era of that 2008 real estate crisis. As individuals scrambled to unload their properties, fearing the worst for the housing market, Dave, an ordinary investor who grasped Charlie Munger's philosophy and MOCV, perceived opportunity amidst the chaos that others saw. Despite cautions from friends and experts against investing in real estate during such uncertain times, Dave held a different vision. Ignoring the warnings, he purchased a discounted condo, confident that the market would eventually recover. As the years passed and the dust settled from the crisis, Dave's once inexpensive condo turned into a success story. Property values surged, and his bold gamble ultimately paid off handsomely. So where are we going with this? First off, you've got to understand that when it comes to the market, madness overselling begets cheap values. For nearly a century, the U.S. economy has witnessed a recession almost every decade. Surprisingly, the longest period without a recession followed that 2008 crash. Then the pandemic hit, resulting in a mandated economic shutdown and what some have described as the most severe recession since the Great Depression. However, all of these downturns presented opportunities, and the case of 2024 will be no different. But if you want to seize that opportunity, you need to be able to understand MOCVs. And of course, you've got to be prepared. If there's one thing that Charlie Munger believed in, it has to be that opportunities are indeed rare. He once said that life doesn't bathe one with unlimited opportunities. And because he believed that good opportunities like what 2024 is presenting to us are rare, he decisively seized opportunities whenever he finally saw them. How can we prepare for 2024's amazing opportunity? Winning during a market crash can be a difficult endeavor. But if there's one thing that Charlie Munger has taught us, it's that it's not impossible. All we need to do is take a leaf out of his book and apply these pretty easy and straightforward strategies. Starting with step number one, which is to always be rational. From the moment you hear Charlie Munger talk, you just know he's a rational thinker. 
And that thinking is key when the market starts to become uncertain. Why? Because logical thinkers don't operate on emotion. They rely on facts and reason. And who better to look up to in this game than Charlie Munger? The man's a legend for a reason. He doesn't let fear or greed dictate his moves. He sticks to his principles, stays grounded, and more importantly, makes the right calls. So you see, instead of succumbing to panic and fear, you've got to keep a cool head when others are acting on emotions. Having already discussed that the stock market crashes are simply part and parcel of investing, and that sometimes markets can even have in value, why exactly should you be afraid? Charlie Munger once warned investors that if you're not willing to react with equanimity to a market price decline of 50% two or three times a century, you're not fit to be a common shareholder, and you deserve the mediocre result you're going to get. It might sound harsh, but he's absolutely right. Panicking during a market crisis can lead to making silly mistakes that can have long-term consequences. When emotions take the wheel, rational thinking goes out the window. And that's exactly why many investors sell so cheaply whenever the market is on a dip. But guess what? The market has a funny way of rebounding when you least expect it. So, those who panic sell end up regretting it when prices soar again. It's a vicious cycle that can erode your wealth and undermine your financial goals. So that's why staying calm and collected during market crises is key. It allows you to think clearly, assess your options, and make decisions that align with your long-term strategy. Remember, in investing, it's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. And this brings us to step number two, which is to avoid economic forecasts. You see, no matter how rational you are when it comes to thinking during an economic crisis, if you allow yourself to be sucked into the news of doom and gloom, you will inevitably fall into the spell of madness. Imagine this. The economy is not looking good, and you're bombarded with predictions of a looming economic apocalypse recession, depression, you name it. Naturally, fear is going to start creeping in, right? And once that happens, you'll panic, thinking you need to act fast to protect your investments. So what do you do? You sell, even if it means offloading your assets at rock-bottom prices. But here's the harsh truth. Economic forecasts are often wrong, and even when they're right, they rarely tell the whole story. Sure, watching your portfolio shrink by the day can be pretty scary, but always take solace in the fact that history has shown us that economies are resilient. They bounce back, often stronger than before. Selling in a panic means missing out on the eventual recovery and the potential profits that come with it. This is the precise reason why Charlie Munger said, if people weren't so often wrong, we wouldn't be so rich. Warren, if people weren't so often wrong, we wouldn't be so rich. Step number three, however, is actually one of the core components of Munger's approach to investing the philosophy of value investing. He always said, forget about what you know about buying fair businesses at wonderful prices. Instead, buy wonderful businesses at fair prices. Munger avoided stocks that other investors might hastily pick up simply because they appeared to be a good deal. Instead, he favored investments in companies that he perceived as rock-solid businesses, prioritizing their fundamental strength above all else. And that's what value investing is all about. It centers on seeking out undervalued assets with strong fundamentals. Our way of thinking, all intelligent investment is value investment. Because why would you want to buy something which wasn't worth as much as you were paying for it? And who wouldn't like buying something for less than it's worth? By focusing on intrinsic value rather than fleeting market sentiment, you're playing the long game. Plus, it's a strategy rooted in logic and reason, not emotion. Instead of getting caught up in the hysteria of market fluctuations, you're calmly analyzing companies, assessing their worth, and making informed decisions. It may not seem flashy or glamorous, but it's proven to stand the test of time. Because value investing, the way I conceive it, is, is always wanting to get more value than you pay for when you buy a stock. And, and that approach... Will never go out of style. Now, one good way to invest in value is to invest in companies with a strong moat, which are the competitive advantages that set a business apart from its rivals and create barriers to entry. Take, for instance, Microsoft and Apple. They both possess strong moats, leveraging network effects, unparalleled brand power, and switching costs, ensuring their continued dominance in the ever-evolving tech landscape. 
And that's why Charlie Munger said they'd stand strong even in the next 50 years. By investing in companies with durable moats, Munger was able to generate consistent returns over time. And it's a winning strategy that can never go wrong. Finally, though, you've got to avoid the urges of day trading and focus on the long term. Remember when Charlie Munger said, the big money is not in the buying and selling, but in the waiting? Investing for the long term is always the right decision, especially in a difficult economic climate. In uncertain times, short-term strategies can be like playing a game of roulette. It's risky and unpredictable. But investing for the long term is like building a sturdy house on solid ground. Markets may fluctuate and economies may falter, but history has shown us that over the long term, they tend to trend upward. By staying invested for the long haul, you're giving your investments time to grow and compound. Plus, you're writing out the inevitable ups and downs along the way. When you really think about it, why should you even sell your investments during a downturn when it only solidifies your losses? For example, in the February 2020 market crash spurred by COVID-19, an ETF mirroring the S&P 500 might have plunged over 30%. Selling your investment then would have crystallized those losses. However, by staying invested, you could have potentially regained your losses by August of the same year. Thus, adopting a long-term mindset during volatile market phases remains a timeless strategy that can never lose its relevance.